Hello, so today I'm gonna tell you all of the things that you should know before you send your child to daycare or to preschool. I used to work as a preschool and daycare teacher. I've had a lot of years in my belt. I am now also a mother, so I can share that experience and that perspective as well. But I really wanted to make sure that you feel ready and prepared before you send your child away. It can feel very terrifying, and I wanna make sure that that experience can go as smoothly as possible. So the first piece of advice that I wanna share is label everything. As many things as you can label, label them. We do not want to lose your things. We don't want to mix your things up. Sometimes kids have the same items because that's just how things go. So if you can label everything that you can, please do it. Jackets, snow pants, boots, shoes, hats, gloves. That way, if a new teacher comes on their way, if somebody has to sub for that room, they can locate the items. Even if your child has been going to daycare for a while, it's really important to make sure any new item, all of your old items, everything is labeled. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure that if your child is under six, to bring as many extra spare clothes as you can, especially if they're potty training. A lot of times parents will bring in an extra pair of pants and an extra pair of underwear, and maybe a shirt or two, but then they don't always have socks. A lot of times when the child has an accident, the pee will actually drip down their legs and get their socks dirty too. So don't forget the socks as well. Sometimes if the weather has affected the clothing, sometimes the teacher will wanna change their outfit as well. So if your child is in the potty training process, I will say that four pairs of undies, four pairs of pants, and three total outfits. Also, as the weather changes, make sure you're going through your extra outfits that you bring for your child to make sure that they're weather appropriate. If your child is not potty training and hasn't had an accident in a few months, I would say two outfits probably will be a good spot to be. Now with the clothing, try and make sure that you can provide some sort of baggie for these items. I've seen a lot of parents provide Ziploc bags or just old grocery bags do just fine. That way there's somewhere to put these clothing items. Now the next tip that I have for you guys is a little acknowledgement goes a really long way. These teachers are often working pretty underpaid or they have low staffing issues as many places do nowadays. But a lot of times just hearing thank you or hearing I really appreciate you can really mean a lot to that teacher in helping them feel better. I mean imagine you hear that at your workplace. You're gonna feel a little bit better about your day and therefore you're gonna to do better at your job and feel better about coming in and therefore your child is gonna feel better because the environment is happy and good. Secondary to that tip is when your child comes back with some information about misbehavior, a lot of the times the teachers are coming to you to let you know and have some acknowledgement on that issue so that they feel like they're not just kind of stuck in this stage of this behavior. We often don't want your child to misbehave. We don't feel excited to tell you that your child didn't have a good day, but really what goes a long way is just saying, hey, I'm really sorry you dealt with that today. If a conversation about a behavior is happening at school, but not at home, children will pick up on that and things will start to get a lot more messy. So making sure that we're a team and we can all work together is the most ideal. The next tip that I have for you is to socialize your child as much as you can and feel comfortable doing so. This is going to make their experience so much better. I know that I really, really appreciate it when you could see that a parent really worked on their child and worked with their child to feel comfortable in social settings and new social settings. Children are not gonna always feel comfortable right away. In fact, most children don't. But knowing that you've worked for a few months, honestly, over a year if you can, on making sure that your child is okay to play with themselves, okay to play with other children, it's gonna make sure that everyone's experience in this is gonna go a lot smoother. A lot of parents wonder, okay, should I focus on any educational elements? Obviously, if you want to, go ahead. If your child is interested in learning these skills and learning these concepts, go for it. But I would definitely prioritize the socializing over the education. Because at the end of the day, we are teachers and we're willing and able to teach your child. The next tip that I have for you guys today is to try your best to follow the same routine that daycare is following at home. 
if your child is getting a snack at a time that maybe you're doing that at home if your child is napping at a certain time at daycare try to transfer that nap at home as well this might seem pretty self-explanatory but I found that a lot of parents would do a very different schedule from the one at daycare and those kids were the ones that tended to struggle the most when they had two different environments and two different routines children thrive on rhythm and the safer your child feels the happier and more enjoyable of an experience that they're gonna have now this one is a little bit controversial maybe I don't know how controversial this might be please pick your child up on time we can't go until your child is gone <laughs> we have families likely too that we're coming home to that we're excited to see a lot of the teachers have their own children that they might need to pick up from wherever their child is and to make sure that you are getting your kid picked up on time is going to make again your teacher feel a lot more supported and respected jobs with children are often seen as lesser than and it often translates to to the parents and how they treat us and how they show us that respect pick your child up on time we love your kids but we want to go home too also making sure that you have some extra time to get your child out the door is really helpful because toddlers are toddlers preschoolers are young and they're not gonna go as fast as you think they will the next one that I have seen in many locations is that daycares preschools schools are disgusting they are dirty obviously we do clean them but as far as germs go there are gonna be germs everywhere and your child will get sick a lot especially if you haven't ever sent them to a place like this you're likely gonna have to know that you're gonna have to take a lot of days off of work for that first year because it takes a bit for your child's immune system to build up to that many kids and that many germs another little tip that I would say is try to have lots and lots of conversations with your child about going to school and about going to daycare reading books watching media mr. Rogers neighborhood has all kinds of free media if you google mr. Rogers episodes on daycare mr. Rogers episodes on preschool or going back to school there's so many different resources out there to make sure that your kid can feel ready stories is a huge way that children learn so having conversations as well as those stories is really important even going back to your own childhood is really awesome to share some insights of your little world that you've experienced when you were younger your child is gonna really relate to that a lot more. Narrative and storytelling is a huge way that kids work through their problems and their own personal issues. Now this one is hard to say, but bumps and bruises happen. They happen a lot, especially in a daycare setting. We do so much to prevent them, but oh my goodness, do they happen. 99.9% .9 of the time that your child comes home with a bruise, they literally probably just fell. <laughs> we do our best to make sure that this doesn't happen. We know that that information can make a lot of people anxious. In fact, even as the teacher myself, I felt very uncomfortable sharing that information with the parent because I always was nervous that they would take that information and think that something else was happening. Always trust your gut if you feel like something is happening to your child. Make sure to have conversations with them and keep your eyes peeled. I obviously feel like all of these points are very important, but one thing that I have been learning as a provider is that if you find a place that morally aligns with you and your family's values and how you parent at home, you're going to have so much more of an enjoyable time send your child to this place I actually had to kind of learn this myself I've worked in a few different places where I didn't necessarily morally align with the way that they did things so it kind of made it hard as the teacher because I wanted to do things completely different but the center that I was working at or the places that I was working at wasn't always aligning with how I would have done things another awesome thing that we always appreciate is even if you could only afford a certain kind of center sharing that information with your providers will be awesome so that they know what you're doing at home so they can translate that to the center a good awesome center and teacher will take what you guys do at home as long as it's safe we will translate that over to what we do with your child we really try to personalize as much as we can we're watching each child to see what they need and see what they need from us as teachers oftentimes we have a lot of experience with kids so the information that we might share with you might be really helpful for you guys to do at home as well another thing I wanted to add is that when it comes to the educational portion of centers 
and preschools. Really try to dig in to different centers in your area and try to find what is going to be the best for your child. Now, some kids work really well in a Montessori setting, but some kids work even better in a Waldorf or more nature-based setting. Knowing what's going to best suit you and your family will just make you feel better about sending your child there. This has even actually affected me. I have wanted to find facilities and places and people to work for that align with my values as a teacher because as you work with children, you start to learn what works for you as well and what you feel morally connected to. Simplify as much as you can. Now what I mean by that is if you are sending your child with multiple coats, now I did just talk about clothing. Now clothing is a little different, especially in the potty training age of childcare. But if you're sending your child with three coats that don't stay on the hooks, take some of those home, <laughs> please. Kids are really affected by this as well. When they see a bunch of coats, a bunch of hats, they have seven pairs of gloves and three pairs of boots, it's gonna kind of overwhelm them. So keeping it simple will also really benefit your child as well as the classroom setting. When they can look at the cubby section of the classroom, they will see and feel more safe and comfortable. Environments that are overstimulating tend to have a bad effect on behaviors and feeling safe, as well as making making sure that you're not bringing a ton of toys. Now, a lot of good teachers will understand if your child has something that they're really attached to, especially when they're really, really young. But if you're coming in with a big crate of toys, you're probably bringing too much. There are plenty of toys at daycare. There are plenty of toys in your preschool classroom. And there's also likely a beautiful place for them to play outside if you're in a nature-based classroom. So a tool that I have for you is called the car method. Basically, what you do is you let your child bring the toy that they wanted to bring to school but then you tell them that once they have to go to school they have to put it in their car seat so they're still able to bring that item getting you out of the door quicker and more smoothly but then it's not coming all the way into the school then what you will do is you'll put the item in their car seat you could even buckle it up and make it safe and tell them that this toy is gonna be safe with mommy for today when you come back when I pick you up you will see that this toy is still here ready to go this builds a lot of trust with you and the child. It also makes that pickup get exciting because they can get excited about, oh, that toy's in my car seat, let's go check it out. And then of course it minimizes the toys in the classroom. Try and look into the wages that the teachers are getting paid. This is one of those little tips that I feel like isn't valued enough from the parents because sending your child to a center that has very, very low paying wages, you're gonna end up getting a a lot of turnover. Likely the teachers aren't going to feel very happy and then in return the environment isn't going to be as good as if you send your child to a place where the teachers are getting paid better. This doesn't have to mean sending your child to the highest paying, most expensive school ever, but it does help to know that the teachers that your children are being watched by are getting paid a healthy, livable wage. Because I will let you in on a little secret. The workplaces where I was getting paid the least had often lots of turnover, lots of gossip, lots of drama and issues. People were often bored and needed something to do with their lives. So the last thought that I wanted to share is this sort of empathy builder. Picture your child. Now picture 10 to 15, 16 of your child. You might throw in some harder versions of your child. You might throw in some shy versions of your child. Throw in some potty training versions of your child. Throw in a child that's dealing with something really hard at home and put that into a classroom. Your brain is probably going a little crazy from the thought of that. That is what your teachers are dealing with likely on a 40 hour basis. But I guess this sort of mindset change and sort of idea as to what that means can give you a little bit of empathy as to what these teachers and what these caregivers are dealing with on a day to day. So now with that thought, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. If you guys enjoyed this video at all, I'm gonna have many more videos just like this coming very soon. Also, I wanted to add a question of the week to the end of my videos. So please, please, please leave any and all of your questions relating to childcare, relating to motherhood, relating to discipline, leave them all in the comments down below so we can have some conversations as well as possibly being featured at the end of one of my videos. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you very, very soon.